Good afternoon, and welcome to the Great Plague of 2020. Since we've got loads of time on my hands, I thought I'd have a go at making a tutorial of this image here. This is called Quantum Freeman. So if I get rid of this, we'll just have a blank screen. And we're going to first pull in an image with the desert. Yeah, it is here. Which is quite good, um, except we don't want them trees. So I'm going to go get the lasso tool. And we're going to lasso that tree. Then I'm going to put my finger on shift, and the little plus comes up beside the lasso. And we're going to select this one as well. And even the third tree. And then if we go up to Edit, Fill, make sure it's on Content Away. Here's other ones, There's loads of them. But Content Away is what you want. And see it OK. And just leave it alone and it doesn't. Here you go. Now we're going to pull this down. Drag the layer in. Get rid of the original. Alright, let's resize this thing. So this one's to be resized somewhere about there. Maybe a little long. There you go, and we're going to put <coughs> a different ground on it, and we're not actually going to put a ground on it, we're going to put clouds on it instead. So next image is an image of clouds, and what we want to do is just simply drag them down, get hold of the layer, drag it in, get rid of the original. And now we're going to just size this up. Well, obviously, I don't want the sky part. That's what the blue sky is on there. So we want rid of that. So I'm going to use a layer mask to do that. So we'll work. go down to the bottom here. Layer mask is there. And what I'm going to use to get rid of the sky is the gradient tool. So I get the gradient tool, make sure it's on 100% and black to white because that's how masks work, black and white. Black conceals, white reveals. If I click here and just drag down a touch and let go, it'll just put a little feather on that and it takes away all the top. Now I get the move tool. What I'll do is I'll just squash this down a bit until it's in the right place. And the right place is there. Right. Problem with that is it's not in keeping with the rest of the of the image. The rest of the image is blue and this is not. So we're going to change the colour of it. So down to add a new adjustment there. And we're going to use color balance. We're going to attach that to the cloud layer by alt clicking between it. Then we're going to grab the blue slider here and just put more blue in. Find a bit style. Actually, it's alright, it's just too bright. So, back down to add a new adjustment there. Get a human saturation. Alt click between it to attach it to the clouds. And then move the lightness down. And that looks right. I don't they should do. Right, next thing we want 
some sort of a jetty going out. So I have a jetty here. It's a PNG, so there's no putting out involved. If I drive it down and drive it in, there you go. Now we're going to size it up. Yeah, that's not too bad size wise, but it wants to be exactly in the middle of the screen. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a gate on. So, if I look at this, you see, there's my ruler, it's zero. And if we go over here, it's 15 and 3, 3 eighths. So that's seven and a half plus one and a half. So we got the ruler, the ruler, click, it drags out, it drags out the gauge. So seven and a half plus one and a half is about there. So that's the center of the screen. Now what we're going to do is compress this down. So it looks like a jetty going out. And it was sea of clouds, except I wanted to look think it's going further than that. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to Edit, Transform, and Perspective. And what Perspective does is it moves two handles at the same time. So if I move this one, the left one, it'll move the right one as well. So if I move that in, you see both of them are moving in. And the more I move it in, the longer it looks. So what they'll do, and we see we've lost the center on now. See how that jumps past the center when I'm trying to get it on. The way to stop that is put your finger on control and it'll move one pixel at a time. Like that. Right, again, the color of the jetty is wrong. So we're going to do the same as what we did with the clouds. We're going to put a new adjustment layer on and it's going to be color balance. We're going to attach that to the jetty. And we're going to put more blue in. And more cyan. And we'll get the color we want. And again, it's not dark enough. So again, we're going to add another adjustment layer but this time it's going to be hue and sat detach it by alt click in between it and then you can adjust the lightness down there you go so I'm a little bit better Right, the next thing is we need a subject in there. So I've got one out, a nude one even, and here it is. Ah, weren't expecting that way. Right, we need to cut this guy out. So I'm going to select the selection tool and select subject at the top. And it made a fairly good attempt at that. Um, top's all right. Just checking down. Yep, yeah, got a bit of a problem here. A bit of a problem there. Um, just want to be pumped out a little bit. And there. But it'll be easier to take them out using the polygonal tool. So if I get the polygonal tool, zoom down, and if I put my finger on Alt, a little minus will come up there, meaning that it'll take away from the selection.
like so. Same with fingers. And this bit down here. A little bit between his legs. And just moving down his feet. Keep me bumping in again, so we'll get the quick selection tool again. This time we'll put the finger on it to get a minus there. And we're going to just slide back in. And the same here. Nudge these back in. And the only thing left, I think, is the bow. Yep. See, it missed this bit of the bow. So we're going to go back to the polygonal tool. Put the finger on Shift to add. Yep, and fill in this bit that it missed in the middle. And then we'll come up here and put the finger on Alt to get a minus. I'll take that away and we'll do the same. Let's get to the bottom here. And that should be okay. Yep, it all looks alright. So we're going straight into selected mask. <clears throat> I'm going to feather the model by one just to take the sharp edge away from them. I usually move the shift edge to about minus 12, which will Stop you getting a hard edge of colouring around them, like a halo. And we'll decontaminate the colour and say OK. And there he is there. And I'm quite happy with that, so I'm going to right hand click in the mask and apply the layer mask. <coughs> and that just leaves us with the one. Again, we're going to pull it down. You want to grab the layer and pull it in. And get rid of the original. And then we can resize the model. My model needs to be right in the middle again. That should do. Okay. That was a bit light for this particular image. So again, I'm putting an adjustment layer on. It's going to be human saturation. I'm going to attach it to. And then just Dot when I'm down a bit. Just play right there, makes him look like he's in the photograph. Right. Now this is my model here. I'm going to make a copy of them. So I'm going to do that by pressing Control J, J for Jasper. I'm going to take the bottom one here. And I'm going to grab the top handle of the model and I'm just going to drag it down and stretch it down a bit. Then we're going to actually just move it up a bit to match his feet in. Again, there's that jumping about a bit. So we'll put the finger on control and we can nudge it in perfectly. 
Then I'm going to put another adjustment on to human saturation, attach it to it, and we're going to take the lightness and slab it right over to the left. And so we've just created a shadow, except the shadow's a bit sharp. So I'm going to go on to blur, Gaussian blur, and would have always in the right layer. Pull that blur, Gaussian blur, and that's not too bad at all. Yep, that was 16 ish. I want to see it okay to that. Now, the thing about shadows is that nobody usually does them right. If you've got a light source over here, and a shadow coming from there, it should be darker at his feet than it would be further away. And most people don't, they just ignore it. Um, but here's a way of doing that. And you do it with a layer mask. So if I, this is the model here, if I put a layer mask on, and I get the gradient tool. Again, it's got to be black to white, but it's not going to be perfectly black this time. I want to take it down to about 50%. And because this port wants to be less, which is the black end, if I just pull a gradient straight up to his feet, there you go. It's darker towards his feet and light as it walks away to his head. Good thing is to put your opacity back to 100 because you always forget to do it. And now we're in the framing. So let's go get the frame. And there's the frame. Now we're going to cut this out, so I'm just going to use a polygonal tool. So there you go, we've got that selected, but we don't want the inside part. So again, if I press Alt, we'll get a minus up. I'll be able to just take out the middle part. Like so. Right, so we're going to select, modify, feather. We'll just feather it by one pixel. Again, just to take the edge of it. And then we'll place it on its own layer by pressing Control G for Jasper. There it is. I'll turn that off. That's what we've got. So now I'm going to pull this down. And I'm going to import it into the main document. We'll then get rid of the original. If we want to save it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to move it up into the top corner here. Because I want this frame to be square. So I'm going to use the rulers to make it square. So if I click on it here, can you see the in the ruler? Hold on. I wasn't using the shift key. Right, see the ruler? If I click on it here, I can just pull it out to three. And I can do the same here. See, this is about less than two and a half. I pull this out to three. So now I have a square frame. So let's bring this down here. Let's get this back. 
Now I want to turn this 90 degrees. And you know, if you hover here, you can actually turn it this way. But how would you know it's 90 degrees? Well, the easiest way is put your finger on shift. And it will turn it in 15 degree increments. Sorry, you're only 45 degrees, not 90. So I've turned it so it's diamond shaped. Now we're going to move the sand. Yes. Right. If my remember, memory serves us right, the way to change the size of something from the middle is Shift and Alt. So if I go here, no, it's not Shift and Alt. What could it be? Can't be Control. Shift and Alt. No, see, I'll stick to it either. Control and Alt. No. Shift and Control. No, because it can't possibly be Control. You've got to put the edges on. Either. Okay, we're going to have to do it the hard way. We're just going to change the size. I'll put that back around again. It's going to be. Small lots of big eye. Oh, that's sort of my funny size, isn't it? Right. Also, that's a uh, too blue, really. Um, so I'm going to put another adjustment layer on the frame. Uh, now I'm going to put human saturation on. I'm going to alt click between them. I'm going to turn the brightness down on the looks. Something broader. Something like that. Something that sticks out a bit. I'm totally lost. Because I don't know. Ah, yes, I do know what I'm doing. Um, right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to I'm going to flatten this layer onto that one because that's a proper color now. So I'll go to layer and I'll merge down. Now what I want to do in here is to put a light inside it, and to do that I'm going to go over on this layer to the side. And just right hand click and blend in options is what you want. What we're going to use is stroke. So we take the stroke. Oh, well, some bad color here. Um, we're going to adjust the size of it here to what you want. Something like that. Uh, we're going to even change the opacity of it. We want it on full. And that's quite a nice colour. Now we want to change it. There is a bit lighter. A bit more colour. A bit more, bit more colour. But there you go. See OK. And then you just got to see OK to it. And now you've got this. Which has an effect on. And I don't want the outside straw on. But I can't take it off because it's part of one layer. So the other way around this and that's to go where the stroke is 
right hand click and just three up it says create layers and if we click that what it does is it split it into two so now you've got there's the light on the outside and there's the frame so now we can edit both of them so on the light we've got to decide where it wants to go into the clouds so to do that I'm going to get another ruler from the top here I'm going to drag it down and see it goes into the clouds about there about here so I know which how much I'm taking off so now I'll we'll go to the light oh well let's start at the top we'll go to the frame we'll put a layer mask on we'll get a black brush and we'll just go across hit this there see this is what I was saying I'll always put your possibly back to 100% Because you have a tendency to forget about it when it comes around next time. There you go. So I can take the whole frame out now. Now if I go on to what is the light around the frame and put a layer mask on, I can do exactly the same. I can run across the bottom. Take that light away. And the thing we don't want is the outside. So I'll just run around the outside and take it away. There you go. Now we have a totally different looking thing now, don't we? Now I've finished manipulating them, I want to put them back together again. So if I highlight the top one and go to layers and merge down, it will see what you want to do with the masks because we've got masks on level, we'll apply the masks. So now we've only got one layer. And what I want to do is make three layers. So I'm going to control and just for it twice and now over three layers. I take the bottom layer I wish I could remember what these keys were. Got the move tool. Oh, see that's that's definitely not working. And I just make this bigger. Stop the other thing. Take it off the side. Remember, we've got to have it smack dab in the middle, so we'll line it up there. And this is the one where we've got, and at the top one, we're going to shrink it. So we'll just turn it down a bit. Move it over. That should be smaller again, you know. Just something like that. Yeah, that looks over here. 
Right, now we'll get the move tool. We'll finish with these uh, gains. So we're going to take the gains back to the rulers. And that's all the elements of the image in. Um, there's a couple of points to do yet. One is if these are lights, then we should be tinging the edge of the the jetty, and we should be tinging the edge of the model. So, well, let's start with the, the jetty. Um, there's the jetty, the jetty layer. And what I'm going to do is add another layer on the top of it. I'm going to attach it to it. I'm going to get that colour. So I hit the foreground colour and come over with a little eyedropper. I get that colour. And if I get a brush, what I can do is just run down the side of the jetty. So it's be fairly small here. Like so. so. Then what we'll do is we'll change the blending mode to be soft light. Then turn down the opacity till it looks right. Something like that. And you see you might think there's nothing there but just very slightly but it, you can see it. Now we'll do the same with the model. And the model is that one, I think. Right, so there's the model. Again, above the model, we'll put a blank layer in. We'll attach it to the model. And then we'll go zooming down. I'll just start at the top of his head. All you want to do is trace along. Even a bit on the ball. There you go. Now we we'll start on the next side. And again, it's looking quite stupid at this point. But when you come over and change the blending mode to flight. Now we can't adjust the opacity on the come out of it. So we need to zoom out to get the full screen. Just opacity. So it just looks right. Which is see the difference? Not much, but it's just enough to for your eye to see. So this is looking almost complete. Um, we're hitting the end part now, so we're going to boost the contrast on it. So I'm going to go to the top of the layer stack. I hit the adjustment layer and hit gradient map. I'm going to make sure it's on black and white. Black and white. And I'm going to change the blending mode to soft light. Then I'm going to adjust the opacity down till it looks right which is quite high on this one actually from there I think have a look yeah that looks better right and then we'll put another adjustment we are on but this time there'll be levels and we'll just bring the 
crack and the white lines in. Just again to boost just a touch. And I think this will heal from having a vignette on. So I'm going to put a new layer at the top. I'm going to shrink this down because now I want a black brush. And I want to adjust that black brush to only be 20% opacity. And it's going to be big. So I'll take that. And what I want to do is just run across the edges. And possibly across the bottom. Across the edge. Across the edge. And I'm going to click it again. And do exactly the same thing again. Probably a bit more on the bottom. Right, now I'll bring that up. Again, you don't realise it because you've just done it, but if I click it off, that's what you've done. You've just brought everything into that diamond shape. There's only one last thing to do on this now, and that's to put a bit of light spill on it uh, to make it look like the light's glowing. So I'm going to put a new layer. On the top, I'm going to get the foreground colour and I'm going to get this blue here. Then I'm going to turn the opacity of the brush down to about 10%. Now I'm going to adjust the size of the brush to be, say, something like that. Then I'm going to put 10% of that colour on. So I'll just go down, like so, then adjust it some more, do the same for the middle one, the same with it. Smallest. And again, if I turn it on and off, you can see what you've actually done with it. See, it's got a glow now. And that, my friends, is quantum framing. Uh, just to remind you that the, there's a written tutorial and the source files are on the South Shields Digital Group website, of which there's a link on my header or in the description of this tutorial. Uh, thanks for watching.